Praise the Lord, everyone, and thank you for joining me for God Speaks. Happy Wednesday, y'all. We are halfway through the week. Um, I want to talk about Hannah this Wednesday um, for our Wednesday woman. And before we get started, let's open up with a prayer. So dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy, Lord. I pray, Father God, that you will use me, Lord. I decrease so that you may increase, Father God. In the name of Jesus, have your way, Lord, and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For you are my strength, O God, and you are my redeemer, Lord. I bless you and I praise you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. So I want to talk about Hannah and um, the story of Hannah can be found in the book of Samuel and we are going, I'm going to read you from 1 Samuel chapter 1 verses 27 through 28. It says, I pray for this child and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord for his whole life. He will be given over to the Lord and he will worship the house. He will worship the Lord there. And I'm reading for the NIV um, from the NIV version for simplicity's sake. I know some people are King, King James, King James. Um, but this is on the most basic level that anyone can comprehend what's being said and those type of things. So that is why I'm using the NIV version. So um, I want to talk about Hannah and let me just give some background and I did a video I think not too long ago about Hannah but I did it in a different content. Uh, context because of all the things Hannah went through. Um, so just kind of a quick recap. Hannah was a woman who was married to a man named uh, Elkanah, and I may be butchering these names, I always say that, but nevertheless, he um, had two wives, and one wife was bearing him children, and the other was not, which was Hannah. Hannah was barren. She was not able to produce him any children. But he loved Hannah. And he would give her double portions of meat and things like that. And the other woman, of course, would like provoke her. Because obviously she could probably see that she was more loved than than, than she was. Even though she were, uh, she was, what's the word I'm looking for? She was producing those children. But she could see where his heart lies so she used what she already had that Hannah did not have to provoke her and to um you know make her sad about not being able to produce children well nevertheless Hannah got sick and tired jaw and she went to the temple and she prayed to God so much so to only the that no words were coming out of her mouth and then the the priest said to her he said you know don't be drunk and she's like hey don't take me for a drunk woman she was like i'm an act you know i um I, I believe the word i'm just gonna paraphrase um she was saying that she was in great uh agony or anguish and she was saying how she was just talking to the lord so he said may the lord grant you what it is that you desire to make a long story short the lord end up allowing her womb to open and she produced samuel and there's so many ways to talk about the story of hannah but this part i want to focus on those last two chapters that i just talked about chapter 27 and 28 because they are so important it said that god had granted her what she asked and she gave it back to god and i want you to examine yourself and ask yourself how many times have i said to myself i am going to do this lord if you do this and god is a if you then shall i but god will even meet you at your request so what have you said god if you do this for me i'll do this god if you do this i'll stop doing that or god if you do this i'll begin to do that and we have to watch our words and our oaths to god and our pledges to god so if you say that you're going to do something you have to carry that function out to the lord it's very very important that we make sure that we are doing those things because they're very um, important you're not just making a promise to a friend or someone like that you are saying it to the king of kings that Lord I am going to do what it is that you have uh, asked me to do um, 
and I had promised you that I was going to do this because I know one thing's for sure that God will fulfill his end it is up to us to fulfill our end and to walk in righteousness so go back and examine yourself and ask have you had a Hannah moment where you say God if you do this I'll, I'll do this God if you give me this amount of money I'll start tithing God if you give me this week off I'll go to church if you give me Sundays you know what have you said to the Lord that God I will do this if you do that because God is a if you then shall I but he also he also will meet you where you are so I just want to encourage you two things to go back and examine what you told God you would do if God has given you something and you have squandered it if God has told you something and you have not moved this is your opportunity this is the call to be like Hannah and to give it back to the Lord to do what he told you to do to give those gifts those talents that money that resource whatever it is that God has placed inside of you so that you can be a blessing to the kingdom of God and this is also a wake-up call too to not just make freely not use your words freely I talked about this in a couple videos that your words have power so if you tell God that you're going to do something make sure your intent of your heart is right but not only just the intent of your heart is right but that your actions follow what you're telling God that you would do it's very uh, it's very important that we make sure that we are doing just that that we are telling God what we um, that we are honoring what we tell God would do that we're not just giving him some type of lip service oh God I'm gonna do this or God I'm gonna do that but that okay God you you did this for me and now I'm going to do what it is that you asked me to do or either do what it is that I I said that I would do out of my own mouth out of my own confession and it kind of takes me to the story of um, Ananiah and Sapphira and I may be pronouncing these wrong but basically it was a man and a woman who um, they had sold houses um, you know they sold their property and they presented it as if it was the whole amount of money that they got and instead of just being honest and saying we're giving a portion you know because it was theirs to do what they wanted to do but because their heart was in the wrong place and their actions looked like something their mouth was saying but their heart was not behind nor was it a true action what happened was that it um it ended up backfiring and both of them lost their lives due to it so i just want to encourage you today to make sure that you are keeping your promises to god let your words the bible says let your words be yes and nay um anything else comes from the evil one like don't be i swear or any of those type of things make sure your words align with what god is calling you to do and what he's telling you to do and if you make a promise to him just be sure to keep it and if you have made a promise and you don't know how to go back and fulfill it or you regret not fulfilling it just simply repent and have a change of heart that i won't do this anymore lord so i just pray that you guys be blessed and have a wonderful wednesday we are halfway through the week